Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our second meteorolo meteorology lesson. We're going to discuss atmospheric pressure. First off, let's discuss the standard units of measurement. So for uh, temperature, we use degrees Celsius. Pressure is in hectopascals. And if you remember, a pascal is a newton per square meter. Wind is uh, described in knots. Altimeter setting is in inches of mercury. One inch of mercury is approximately a thousand feet. So here is uh, how a mercury barometer looks like or classically looks like if a bath of mercury, a tube with a vacuum in the top and then changing the atmospheric pressure will have that mercury move up and down uh, that tube. So a standard would be 29.92 inches how high the mercury would rise up in this tube. So when we discuss station pressure, what we're talking about is the air pressure, the force per area at a given station. Higher elevations generally have lower pressure. On the left, uh, we just discussed already uh, how a classic barometer works. However, on the right uh, is a more modern uh, type of, well, I guess still an analog uh, barometer. Of course, things are digital now and uh, you have a vacuum chamber and then as the pressure changes you have those bellows the chamber gets uh, larger or smaller it's connected to a lever which then makes a dial uh, and a pointer turn to indicate the correct station pressure concept of sea level pressure comes up often uh, it is the pressure that is at sea level so even though the station pressure might be different we talk about the station pressure at sea level at a given airport and what this allows us to do is get the altimeter setting if we uh, know the station pressure and the elevation of an airport then we can figure out what the sea level pressure is and then once we know the sea level pressure that is the altimeter setting then air traffic control can give every aircraft the altimeter setting and then that makes sure that everybody, all the aircraft are on the same altimeter setting and the same altitude or, or at least there is some sort of a standard. So a, lar a higher column of air means a higher station pressure. So at sea level there will be a higher column of air above it. So the pressure is going to be higher at sea level than it will be at the station pressure which may be higher. So here we start talking about atmospheric phenomenon. So we're going to discuss in the next uh, couple slides, pressure systems and variation. So first off, let's talk about a high pressure region. If you look here, the big H indicates a high pressure region. It's obviously an area where the atmospheric pressure is relatively higher than, area, than the surrounding areas. High pressure regions are generally associated with divergence and subsidence, so that's downdraft. So if you think about it, the high pressure region, the air will want to go outwards from the high pressure region. So that's divergence, and that air has to be replaced somewhere, and it's replaced from the air above it, so that's why you have the subsidence, the downdraft. High pressure regions are typically associated with clear weather and light winds. In the winter time, this means cold and clear air. Often for days at a time, it's kind of a beautiful cold winter day. That's a high pressure region. However, in some areas uh, with uh, an abundance of condensation nuclei, I will learn more about that later, you can end up with very, very heavy fog. Probably the heaviest fog I've ever seen uh, in my career was in a, for a couple days was actually in a town called Prince George, British Columbia. There's a number of pulp mills there. There was a high pressure uh, system there. And because of the pulp mills had a lot of smoke, condensation nuclei, and all the moisture just got pushed right down onto the town and onto the airport uh, for, for several days. You can also have a ridge. A ridge is an elongated high pressure area. So you look at the uh, image on the right. We have the high pressure, and then here we have a ridge, and you can kind of see it makes makes this ridge uh, shape. So here's an example, just a picture of uh, what I mentioned, how you can end up with fog. 
you can see it, it's a beautiful clear day. However, the smoke coming out from whatever this industrial site is pre, uh, presents condensation nuclei and it's getting forced down by that high pressure region, leaving a layer of smoke or haze uh, over the area. Conversely, we can have a low pressure region. And a low pressure region, you can imagine that the air comes from the surrounding areas and goes into the low pressure in the middle. So what that means is you have convergence and uh, convection. You have updraft. So the air comes from surrounding areas into the low, has nowhere to go but up. And so often we end up with unstable weather, such as thunderstorms, because the air is converging and then there are updrafts. We can have a modification of a low pressure region. It's called uh, a trough. So it looks just like, well, like a feeding trough right here. Okay. And this is kind of an elongated low pressure area. Whether it uh, troughs is similar to cold fronts, we'll learn about that later. Uh, you can end up with strong winds and uh, unstable, uh, miserable weather. The picture of un, uh, unstable air from a low pressure region, here's a massive cumulonimbus mummatus cloud. And uh, you can just imagine that you're gonna end up with uh, very unstable air, high turbulence, thunderstorms, hail, that sort of thing in a strong low pressure region. Temperature uh, can affect uh, atmospheric pressure. So the contraction of cold air, of a cold air column, uh, has a greater decrease of pressure with altitude because it's more dense, everything kind of sits lower. And uh, conversely, a warm air will have a, a greater change of pressure with uh, altitude. These data are collected using weather balloons and are very important for weather forecasting. Isobars are lines connecting points of equal barometric pressure. You'll see isobars on weather maps, surface analysis maps, and forecast maps as well. Here they are kind of a blue color. So let's just take a look at them here. I just have a red pen. So you can see this line right here. I'm just drawing it right, following it. Okay. That uh, right there has a, uh, a pressure of 1,016, uh, or looks like 1,012 hectopascals. So if you just follow this around, it'll make like a ring. And you can kind of think of it as similar to contour lines on a topographic map. As this is kind of what the pressure is like. Remember we use a standard atmosphere, the units 15 degrees Celsius. The atmospheric pressure, 29.92 inches of mercury or 1,013.2 hectopascals and a lapse rate of 1.98 degrees Celsius per thousand feet. Cold air has higher contraction of pressure with altitude than the warm air. High pressure area is associated with cold, clear weather, but sometimes heavy fog. Low pressure area is associated with unstable weather. Isobars on a weather map link areas with equal atmospheric pressure. Okay, here's our first sample test question. The temperature on the ground is 20 degrees Celsius. The ground elevation is 500 feet ASL. What is the approximate temperature at 9,000 feet, assuming a standard lapse rate? So uh, ground elevation is 500 feet, so 9,000 feet minus 500, so that would be 8,500 uh, feet approximately. If we recall, our standard lapse rate is approximately two degrees per thousand feet. So we have eight and a half thousand feet multiplied by two. So that would be 17. So 20 minus 17, maybe I'll just actually draw this out or write this out, 9,000 feet minus 500, just make it clear, equals 8,500 feet times two degrees Celsius per thousand feet. So that's going to be 17 degrees. So we start at 20 degrees minus 17 degrees equals 3 degrees C. So the correct answer is going to be B, 3 degrees. Sample weather can be expected at low pressure system. So remember, low pressure system has convergence and updrafts, unstable air. So 
A, thunderstorms. Yeah, you're going to see thunderstorms. B, fog. Uh, no, not usually. Fog is when the air is very stable. Calm and clear. Uh, it's usually high pressure systems, so that's not correct. And steady snow. Uh, no, not usually uh, steady snow. So the correct answer, A, thunderstorm. What type of weather can be expected at a high pressure system in the winter? So remember, you're going to have very stable air. So A, thunderstorms, we can rule that out. Uh, B, fog, uh, generally not. Uh, it's, it's rare. It is possible, but it is great rare. C, windy. Uh, no, that's usually associated with uh, trough. Uh, D, cold and clear. So that's the correct answer. Thanks all for joining me. We'll see you on our uh, next meteorology lesson.